Hi everybody, it's Steve Rizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director. And here we are in Power Director, part six of our eight-part basic training tutorial series. Now, the feature I want to show you in part six here is a feature that's available in virtually every video editing program. It is the key to higher power <laughs> in any video editor. It is the key to creating animations, the key to creating advanced special effects or 3D motion, any of those really cool things you can do using keyframing. Now keyframing is about varying the settings of something, varying its position, varying its levels, its intensity. You can use keyframing, for instance, when you've got a narrator speaking and you've got background music. Use keyframing to temporarily fade back the background music when the narrator is speaking. Use keyframing to create a pan and zoom off across a photo. You can use keyframing to take a special effect and rotate an object or change the intensity of the effect on an object. To show you the basics of keyframing, I'm just going to take a photograph here on the timeline. I'm going to select it, and as you know, whenever you select any clip on the timeline, you get these little function buttons that appear along the top of the timeline, and they vary depending on the properties of the clip you've selected. Since I've selected a photo, if I go to Tools, I have the option to use the Pan and Zoom tool. Now the pan and zoom tool, as you might expect, will automatically create a pan and zoom across your photo. And if you've got a slideshow, it adds a little bit of life to still pictures. Now there's a random one in which the program just sort of makes a random choice on your pan and zoom. There are also specific pans or zooms. And if you go down to the very end, there's user defined, which I'm going to, with that photo selected, click on user defined, and that will open up my magic motion designer. And here's where I'm going to create the animation for my pan and zoom. You notice on the timeline, they've already given you a beginning and end point. Right here is a little diamond at the beginning of the timeline and a little diamond at the end. These little diamonds are keyframes. And when I move my playhead over the diamond, the yellow diamond turns red and I can redefine the keyframe. So this keyframe now represents this width and height and location. And I can drag on these corner handles and resize it any way I want. And if I grab the middle here, I can even reposition it. You could use the numbers also, but this to me is more intuitive. This is going to be my starting point. This is going to be my initial keyframe. Now I'll move the playhead to the end of the timeline. To this last keyframe, and I kind of like what they've chosen, this close-up of the little boy. I'm just going to modify it a little bit. You notice as long as you're on the keyframe, you can change the settings for the keyframe. And that's really all there is to it for creating a pan and zoom over a photo. I'm going to select the option here to jump to previous keyframe. Then I'll move the playhead back to the beginning of this picture. And then I'll click OK. I could test drive it here. I'm just going to click OK. And now when I play my timeline, I'll see that pan and zoom. Keyframes to create the animation. By the way, let me just reopen that panel by selecting User Defined again. I can create as many keyframes as I'd like. If I wanted to add one right in the middle, I can select the option to add a keyframe and I can add yet another level of motion. And I can do that anywhere, whatever I'm working with, whatever I'm keyframing, I can use as many keyframes as necessary to create the effect. Let's cancel out of this. And I'm going to just select a clip here on my timeline. This little boy playing mini golf. And then I'm going to apply a special effect. Go over to the effect room on the left. And we're going to add an effect called black and white. As you might expect, when I drag it onto my clip, it changes it to a black and white movie. With keyframing, I can vary the intensity of that effect. So with a clip selected, I'm going to click on the effect function button. There's my effect, the black and white effect. And if I go down here to the lower right, I can click on the keyframe button. And this takes me into the keyframe workspace where I can create my animation. Keyframes are represented as little diamonds. So right where the playhead is right now, I'm going to click to create a diamond. I'm most interested in the setting for black and white degree. That is how black and white the video is. In this case, we'll create keyframes to represent this particular setting. That is completely black and white. And then I'm going to move the playhead over just a couple of seconds. And I'm going to create a new keyframe just by changing the setting for degree, moving that slider back to zero. So now it is a full color picture. 
And now the program will create the transition from black and white to color. So I'm going to just move the playhead back to just before that transition. And now if you watch the preview window, you should see it slowly transition from black and white to color. You can use keyframes in so many places in an editing program. Like I said, you can create animation, 3D motion. Uh, you can vary levels of audio. You can vary levels of video. You can create pans and zooms and crops and any special effect you want. Keyframes are really, like I say, the key to the higher power here in the program and well worth getting to know. But that's the basics of keyframing. Keep your eyes open for them. You're going to see keyframes everywhere in this program. Now in part seven, we'll go back to something a little more basic. We'll add some titles to our movie in part seven of our basic training for CyberLink PowerDirector.